cha Timoteo rwandiko rwa kabiri Paul yandikiye Timoteo We are reading in the second epistle that Paul wrote to Timothy Igice ni cha kabiri chapter 2 ku murongo wa 8 And it's verse 8 Uje wibuka Yesu Kristo wakomotse muri uzaro rwa Dawidi akazuka mu bapfuye kuko ubutumwa nahawe buvuga amen Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel Uje wibuka Remember Yesu Kristo Jesus Christ wakomotse muri uzaro rwa Dawidi of the seed of David akazuka mu bapfuye was raised from the dead ngo nguko ubutumwa nahawe buvuga according to my gospel ubutumwa bukomeye inumwa Paul yari ifite the greatest message that Paul the apostle Paul had kwari ukuvuga inkomoko ya Yesu was to talk about the origin of Jesus kandi no kuvuga misiyo ya Yesu and also clarify the mission of Jesus kuvuga icyamuzanye why he came inkomoko ye and his origin and why he lived why he came what brought him so he tells him remember this the gospel I have been given and the gospel I share with you is centered on Jesus Without Jesus, without Christ, this is not the gospel. But the gospel I have is based on Jesus Christ. Then I'll tell you his origin, where he comes from. And I'll tell you what he did that no man ever did. This is what the apostle Paul preached to the Gentiles. And in the scriptures he tells us remember this and repeat this. Let me tell you the origin of Jesus. And then I'll tell you his mission. On Christmas. We remember his birth. But it doesn't end with his birth. It leads us to his death. Death. If you may go with me to the book of Micah. Micah 1. Verse 1. Bethlehem is a father. Muri wowe ni wo hazava uzaba umwami wa Israeli akansanga imiramba girireye ni yiteka uhereye kera kose English Bible readers it's Micah 5 verse 2 the Bible says but you Bethlehem Ephrathah though you are little among the thousands of Judah yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel whose goings forth are from of old from everlasting. Imiramba girireye cyangwa se origine ye, inkomoko ye. His origin or his goings forth. Ngo ni iteka ryose. Ah everlasting. Uyu Yesu Kristo. This Jesus. Ke tumuzi kwisi. We know him here on earth. Afite gusimya kamike. With only a few years. Ari ku inkomoko ye. But his origin. Imiramba girireye. His goings forth. His origin is of old. He is from a long time. Abraham met him a long time ago. Almost 4,000 years ago. They met in a plain. Of, Je of, of the Jebusites in Jerusalem. And he asked him, Who is your father and mother? Because in culture, 
our fathers, besides this generation, whenever our fathers would meet, they would first ask, who is your father? Where do you come from? What is your name? Now, when you shared your name, they would ask your father's name. When you talked about your father, they would ask your grandfather. If you told them your grandfather, they would then recognize your family. They would recognize your family. But our generation, your father, they would ask but this generation, you tend to find that cousins, first cousins, do not know each other because of our history. Some were raised in Congo, some were raised in Burundi. Some even get into relationships with their relatives without knowing. Things have changed. But we need to know our origins. So he asks him, what is your name? And this man tells him, I do not have a father, I do not have a mother. And I was not born. I didn't leave. I wasn't birthed. I have no genealogy here. <laughs> When he heard of this, he took all that he had, he gave him a tithe. This other man took bread and wine and gave him. Then they went their separate ways. So he asked him, where do you come from? And he said, I'm a king. The king of righteousness the king of righteousness and I'm the king of peace my name is Melek Sedek Melek Melek in Hebrew means king Sedek or Tzidikeno means righteousness I am the king of righteousness this surprised Abraham because he was coming from a society that was so defiled. He was coming from Babylon where people did whatever pleased them. Now he goes to Canaan. He finds people unrighteous for the first time. He meets a man who tells him he's the king of righteousness. He said, what? He repeats himself, I'm the king of Salem. Salem means peace. Shalom. Shalom. The king of peace. So he wonders, other kings do not have peace. How do you come? How do you have peace? Because many kings live in battles, conquering lands. No, so where is this king coming from? It's amazing. Napoleon in his last years, his last days, he was on an island. He wrote a book. He wrote so many things. So some of the questions they asked him, they would ask him where does he get his greatness? The secret of his strength. How they conquered the world. And he tried to explain to them. Then at some point he says, I read history. And I followed the history of my predecessors. Even with this kingdom. If I even may begin with Alexander the Great. Things that he achieved, he conquered the world. I looked at Charles Maine. I looked at his history and how he overtook the world. Even I myself, Napoleon, all of us, we have conquered the world to ourselves. But 
we used the sword for people to come to us. For people to follow us. But then there is another man called Jesus. He conquered the world without the sword. But with love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He only used love. And he conquered but the world. But I, Napoleon, and my predecessors, we had to use the sword. Until then, I started thinking, this king, I came to understand, is in all these reigns that have used the sword, they have a beginning, they have an end. But the reign of this man, which he has established in the church, it will never end. It will never end. Because he has people who love him yet have never seen him. There is a king, a Roman king called Cicero. Cicero was extraordinary in the Roman Empire. And he was very wicked. So they told him, Cicero, we have a problem. We have gone all around the Roman Empire. We have gone everywhere. We found that everyone hates you. And he asked them to elaborate. How come? How come they hate me? He said, yes, they hate me. And then he asked, do they fear me? Yes, they fear oh, you. Wow. He said, that's wonderful. They may hate me as long as they fear me. The king, I'm telling you, you, the Bible tells us to remember him. We would choose to hate him, but we have nothing against him. If they brought Jesus and told you to accuse yes, him, he, him. he found you sick and healed. Yes, he healed you. He found you. He he you, 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 you had no sleep. He gave you sleep. When everything was done, he brought a solution. This man, why would you hate him? There is no reason. There is no reason. And even better, he has people who follow him who have never seen him who would rather die. <laughs> they would take death any time and they have never seen him. When they went to kill the bishop of Antioch, they took him they took him to Rome. In the second century, this is when this happened. And as they were taking him, he was writing letters to different churches. He went through Ephesus and he a letter. Now, when he reached Rome, they told him, we will ask for only two things. You will deny Jesus. Say that you do not love him or else you can tell the people you can publicly tell the people tell the churches that you do not love Jesus and they told him what we will do for you we will not kill you now they had set a furnace. And there are so many people who had come to see how their bishop would be thrown in the furnace. Some believers were there who loved him so much. They had so much sorrow. They were crying. Then the bishop turns to the king. And the soldiers who were there. And he says, I got saved when I was nine years old. I have walked with Jesus for eight years. He has never hurt me. He has never insulted me. He has never offended me in any way. How can I deny someone who never hurt me? I can't. That's what they, that's what they say. 
So they said, you will throw him in the fire. He said, don't bind me. Command and I will walk to the fire. And he said, you don't know what you're doing for me. Yesu nize inarabon, muminuta mikenda wa muboni. The Jesus I believed without seeing him, shortly I'll be able to see him. Yagiye mwita nuri umuri rosh asha aririmba, abarokore bara hobo se baririmba na nawe bichi. The bishop walked in the furnace while singing and all the believers joined in the singing. There are people who have loved Jesus like he has loved them. And there are others who are doubting. But I tell you, he is the king of Jesus. He is the king of love. He is the king of joy. He is the king who performs His goings forth are from old. When he met Abraham, he told him he didn't have a father and a mother. When Micah saw him, he saw him from everlasting. Daniel, when Daniel saw him, he called him the ancient of days. He has no limit of days. He is the ancient of days. He rules the days. Seasons come and Ashira the time, but he established seasons. Seasons don't govern him, he governs we seasons. We are governed by seasons and time. We are governed by seasons. On our tombstone, on our tombstones, they write our birth date and our death date. It's a time frame. Hagati Between when you were born and when you died. This is where we live our lives. Before our birth and after our death. No one knows what happened. But him. He has no beginning, he has no end. Those who have seen him. This is what Paul said. That I will tell you of this man. His life. And I will tell you how he was resurrected. Hallelujah. The man who has no season. Decided one time to come in this world because of love that that us who are governed by time, he may take that away. Satan because Satan had overtaken people. Satan he had taken the peace of mankind. Satan he had caused fear in people. People walked in fear. People lived in intrigue. People were afraid of each other. They were afraid of death. People panicked. And God said, this is not the man I created. I have to come. I have to come. The Bible says where he was born. Micah told us that he would be born in Bethlehem. Ephrata. He had to look like us that he may defy the difficulties of our lives. That he may cause shame over everything that overpowered us. So Michael gave the address of his place. It is called Bethlehem. Ephrata. Ephrata. In the evening of, J of Israel's life, or Jacob, he called his 12 sons. They were in Egypt at the time. And he started talking to them. He began with Reuben. Went on to bless Simeon. Then Levi, Levi, kept telling them. When he reached Judah, this is what he said. Verse 10. 
inkoni y'ubutware tizava hagati ibirengebze nyira yataraza 49 mu rongo wa 10 itangiriro Genesis 49:10 This is where he tells Judah, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. They were still a very small family. There were still 12 men. But as he was giving his last words to his sons, he was sleeping on a rock. On a bed, on a bed, sorry. As he was sleeping on a bed, his sons walked in. Then he started laying hands on his sons. And but when he came to Judah, when he came to Judah, he had become blind. He said, Judah. The scepter of the kingdom will never depart from you. The scepter of authority will never leave between your feet until Shiloh comes. His owner. In Hebrew, they call him Shiloh. Shiloh is the Messiah. So he sees that someone would arise in the house of Judah and he would become king. He would become king. When this king comes, he will enter the house of Judah. That's where he will be born. Micah has told us the birthplace in Bethlehem. Bethlehem. And Bethlehem. Bethlehem was in the territory that had been given to Judah. But when Jacob was saying this, the Israelites had not been given the permission to go back to Canaan. But he says, This king shall come from Judah. He saw him. Isaiah talked about this thing. Isaiah 11 verse 1. Isaiah 11 verse 1. Mugitina Chayesai Ishami Yerimbuto. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Mugisina chayesai. The stem of Jesse. Hazakomo kamagashami. There shall come a branch. Yesai in Yesewa Dawudi. Jesse was the father of David. Yesai. Jesse. Akomo kwa Yuda. Comes from the house of Judah. No, no, Yesaya we. Now Isaiah pulls this prophecy and makes it even more detailed because when Jacob was blessing Judah, he just made it general and said, Judah, there will be a king that will rise from you. But Isaiah brings it down to the detail and says, from the stem of Jesse. Jesse was a great grandson of Judah. Judah, Judah was the great grandfather of Jesse. Jesse, Jesse is the father of David. In his household, it was located in the territory of Judah. Now Israel in Israel, every tribe had their portion of land except the house of Levi. It's like us taking four provinces of Rwanda and saying, 
the northern province will give it to Judah. The southern province will give it to Reuben. This is how Israel is. Even when they got married, they could be in the capital in Kigali. But they would go to the province. And when someone dies, you are not buried in Kigali. According to the culture of Israel, even though you are powerful, you would be buried in your territory, in your province, in your cell, in your sector, where you were born. Then every family Every family would have a plot of land where they would, they would bury their people. So Micah Micah prophesied that the king would be born in Bethlehem in a small town called Ephrata. Ephrata is a small town in the land of Judea. Avuga avec précision. Isaiah precises, Micah precises. Micah vuga kwa zavu kira Efrata. Micah precises and says he will be born in Bethlehem. Of Bethlehem. Dimo na vuga originese. I'm talking about his origin. Hari origine zakeira. There are ancient origins. Before he was manifested, he worked in greatness. Nothing was created that wasn't created. Nothing lived that didn't live by him. Before mountains existed, before seas were made, he was. John talks about him. Before he existed, he calls him the word. The word was in the beginning. But Isaiah calls him Emmanuel. God coming to dwell with men. Then Balaam. When he saw him. He saw a star from the house of Jacob. In the book of Numbers. 24. Verse 17. Bible says I see you, But not now. Behold, he's not near. A star shall come out of Jacob. And a scepter shall rise out of Israel. It shall crush. It shall crush the forehead of Moab. And break down all the sons of Shem. What was Balaam saying? They had asked him to curse Israel. When they were coming from Egypt. The people that God said would have a king. Sorcerers have power. When they speak evil words against you, they come to pass. The king of Moab, called Bela, tells him, cast those people because they have departed through the Red Sea. They have moved other kings. I don't want to be moved by them. Please cast them for me. They gave money to Balaam. He went. On the way, he met the angel of the Lord. And his donkey told him, Why have you beaten me thrice? What have I done? Balaam says, and the donkey told him, I've lived with you for so long, I've never disobeyed. Do you think it's easy? And as he opened his eyes, he saw the angel of the Lord before him. The angel of the Lord was stopping him from going to cast people that would bother but him. him. But he disobeyed. Because they had paid him money. People have been corrupted ever since, you know. Ever since, people have been corrupted. So he went. When he reached a mountain and Israel was in the valley, he stood over them to 
start sending incantations and then curse them. You know, you know what sorcerers do when they do what they do? So he stands at the mountain ready to curse. He looks at Balak. He looks at Balak. He looks at Balak. And says, Who can curse people that God hasn't cursed? Who can talk evil against people God hasn't talked evil? It should never be. They have a good end. I wish I would die like them. And the king says, I paid you to curse them. How come you? Blessing them. So the sorcerer says, let's move to another mountain. mountain. They go to another mountain. Now this one was fine. Hmm. When he saw, them, he saw them in the plain. And he says, that now I see a star. It's not now. But it shall come from the house of Jacob. And then, there will be a scepter of the kingdom Wisa, upon them. The scepter of this kingdom who will come from Jacob. He will, cru he will crush your head. Oh, hallelujah! 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 hallelujah. hallelujah. So many battles were fought for Jesus to come. But the star was seen. The star was seen. And the Magi saw it. And they said it's the star in the morning. Whatever happens. Your birth has a purpose. The day you were born, there was a star that was seen. That someone has come and there is a purpose to fulfill. Just like Jesus came, he fulfilled his purpose. He came to fight us. He came to redeem us. He came to reveal his purpose to us. That he might take People who walked with the fear of death. And Jesus demystified death. Death became nothing. That was the greatest thing people feared. Besides sin. The second was death. Jesus accepted the death. And they buried him. Buried by the blood. By the list. By the soldiers, by the kings, 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 by the the kings, by the the Abantu bose babibona ariko ashaka gutwereka ko ibyo mwatinye kuva kera naje kwibakuramo ibizongera gutinya urupfu rufite Yesu He allowed them to beat him do you know the power this man had? When they came to take him, the first time, he just asked a question. He said, Who do you want? And they fell back. Then they stood up again. And he said, Who are you looking for? And they fell back again. Then he said, Come, come, come and take me. Come and take me. Time for me. Come and take me. Come and me. Come and take me. Come he wanted to show us that we shouldn't be afraid of the things we are afraid of. He has finished it. His, show, his comings are from everlasting. He came without an end. And he lived in a time frame 
wisdom of 33 years. He gave you eternal life. He came on earth from an everlasting eternal life that we may come out of this world but go to eternal life. It was an exchange of life. He came on earth of people who had time that he may give them an eternal life. That's why when you have faith in Jesus, you do not die. You enter in glory. You enter in glory. It's actually a promotion when you die. You are promoted in glory when you die. But this life has to be prepared while you're still alive. On earth. Just like he prepared for this life while in heaven. That's why we should also prepare for the life in heaven while here. Then Paul says, remember this Jesus Christ. He comes from the house of David, but he died and rose again. This is the gospel I have for you. This is what Paul said. He said, if Jesus was born, we were born. If he died, we will die. If he rose again, we will rise. New message. That's the message. That's the entirety of the gospel. Come out of your fear. Come out of your fear. Even though you die, you live. Do not be afraid. Jesus is saying, you will live. You will live. You will live. Your star shows us that someone came powerful. Jesus came with a star. Just like you have a star on your life. This star is saying do not die anyhow, but prepare your life for the future. Prepare for your eternity. Do what God has called you to do and prepare your future. The Christmas of today is telling you to remember Jesus. He was born in the flesh. Born in the house of David. In the spirit he rose. That's the message you'll take home today. We have Jesus who lived and rose. No one else has risen, but your king is powerful. Even the day you die, because he has enslaved you, he will take you from the slavery of death. Death will not touch you. Death will release you. You will go through the same pathway of resurrection. The Christmas of today tells you fear not. The Redeemer has come in this world. He has taken our fear. He has made us who we are today. He has died and risen. He is at the right of the Father praying for us that we may do well with now you. I ask you that you may reconcile with him, love him, obey him, obey him, obey him until he comes. Let's pray. Jesus. Jesus. Lord Jesus, we bring our hearts before you. We thank you for you have done it. You came on earth. You took on the flesh. That we too. That we too will lose this flesh. And take on the body of glory that is incorruptible. Let your glory, Father. 
Fill this place. Everyone. Every man. Every woman. Every young man. Every young woman. Every young man who are here. Remember that the Redeemer has come. Bless us. I ask a blessing upon these people. This week, let it be good for them. Let them celebrate the birth and the resurrection of your life. You were born and you resurrected. That's the gospel we have. You came in this world and you rose again. We thank you for that. Let the power of resurrection dwell in us and be manifested in the name of Jesus, our King. Amen. Amen. If you haven't received Jesus, if you're not saved, do not go home. I will wait for you. The rest you may go to the Lord. Have a Merry Christmas. Jesus bless you. Jesus bless you. We know what Come and receive Jesus. We are waiting for you. Even those who are following us on radio, on TV, we know what Come and receive Jesus. Those who are following on radio, on TV, you need to receive Jesus. We're going to pray with you now that you may receive him. If you haven't received Jesus, come and receive Jesus. Jesus. Gloire à Dieu. Ter écouté sa voix, gloire à Dieu, gloire à Dieu. Et quand on sing, let's pray. Even those who are following us live, please repeat the prayer. Repeat this prayer. 
Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I give you my life. Receive it. I repent my sins. Forgive me, Jesus. In this moment, I have known that I'm a sinner and that you are a savior. I ask you, O oh Lord, that you may save me. Save me from my sins and receive me, Father. I give myself to you in this moment. Let your glory come upon me that I may be your child. And that you may be my Jesus. father in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 You have received Jesus. Jesus. Jesus is in your hearts now. Go and meet that gentleman and he has something to tell God bless you.